Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. We're still reading from 2 Timothy, only this time, this is 2 Timothy 2, and we're reading this time from verse 19 to 22, followed by Pat's Two Cents. Woo! Okay, ain't you excited? Anyway, nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth. And some to honor, and some to dishonor. <clears throat> if a man therefore perch himself, <coughs> excuse me, from these things, he shall be a vessel of honor. Or let me read it correctly: He shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. Flee also youthful lust, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace. With them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. All right, now, let me share this with you. When you are looking at vessels of honor and vessels of dishonor, many people think that because they gave their heart to the Lord, they have escaped hell, okay? They have been forgiven for sin, okay? Now, but they don't realize that there is still a work to be done. There is a cleansing, a cleansing, a purging, a learning, an obeying, a submitting, and when you are, when you begin to do that with the word, with people who watch over your soul to help you grow in the Lord, when you cooperate with the saints of God, at the word of God, the ways of God, then what ends up happening is you gain things like self-control, you gain maturity, you gain understanding and insight, and you grow in all kind of ways from within. Now, where some people go wrong is they think they, okay, I ask, I, I, I confess my sins, I ask Jesus into my heart, and I ask God to fill me with the, with his Holy Spirit. And they draw a line right there and they say, okay, I was this, now I'm this. And they stop. That's like a person who goes to, who, who goes to uh, driver's ed. And the teacher has them get in the driver's seat and he hands them the key. And he says, now I want you to turn on the ignition. Now, where is the ignition? Oh, it's right here. And they turn on the ignition. And it starts. And it revs up. And they're all happy because they started the car. Where is that going to get them? They don't know how to drive the car. They have to sit in the learner's seat while the teacher teaches them the ins and outs of defensive driving, of lining your car up and keeping it between two lanes, staying in your place so that you don't collide with someone who's in their place by crossing the line. Oh, I hope you're hearing all the little innuendos here. Okay, so when you're learning to drive a car, when the teacher is instructing you, you can't be on the phone texting your friends when the teacher's trying to teach you how to use your mirrors to line your car up and do parallel parking. You can't be jamming off the music with the earphones 
while the teacher is trying to show you how to make sure that when you come to a stop, you make a complete stop before you even make a right turn. You have to make a complete stop. Where to hold your hands on the steering wheel. How to ease your foot on the brake so you're not throwing people through the windshield. How to control your acceleration. How to control your, your speed. How to maintain your speed once you get it where you want it to be. How to know when to drive faster, when to drive slower. How to stay away from people who are getting in and out of their cars. How to how to recognize when you need to give them a wider berth. If there's no one in the car, no problem. Someone in the car, you give them a wider berth. The wisdom of the road. You have to learn these things. You have to learn defensive driving. Learn how to predict the driver's next move. It's not just about putting your... Your, your, your pedal to the metal and moving forward. There's a whole lot to driving a car. And you cannot sit in that seat, turn that key on, and think that you're a master because you turned the key on the car started. whoop de doo as Archie Bunker used to say. That's not going to get you anywhere. But in the car. So you're in Christ. That's not going to get you anywhere just to be in Christ. Just sitting in that driver's seat with the with the car in neutral just rolling, just, just vroom, 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 idling along, and you're just sitting there. You're not going anywhere. You don't know anything about the road. But you think you're a master because you started the car. And your little brothers and sisters are looking up at you like, Ooh! Look at someone, so look at you, you're driving. No, you're not driving. You don't even know how to do it. So when you get in Christ, don't become a master when you don't even know what you're mastering. Don't even try it. That's called pride. We all have to fight pride. I still have to fight pride after, be, after walking with the Lord for 36 years, I still have to battle my pride, which means nobody arrives. It's a journey, a progressive journey. Excuse me. Full of hot air, I guess. Okay, so when you are learning, you have to find someone to submit to Remember to find a body or a person who's a minister or in the gospel to baptize you. You have to start learning that Bible. See if you can get some friends to come over your house, some born-again Christians truly trying, and see if they will come to your house and have Bible study once or twice a week. Get in that word and learn. Learn who God is. Learn who Satan is not. Because when you realize the chain of command, and you know God's on your side, it's like having a big brother with, with, with all kind of artillery on him when a whole bunch of, you know, your little poop butts try to come and bully you. They can't hold a candle because all he's got to do is pull a trigger and they're gone. So you're, you know, you got your chest big because you know, can't touch this. Well, that's the way you should feel with God when you have to battle the workers of darkness. You fear God, not them. You just get rid of them. But you fear God. You obey God. You honor God. You praise God. Okay, I don't want to get off on tangents, but my main thing I'm trying to tell you is when you're at your beginning stages of walking with God, sit, shut up, observe, read, pray, and listen. Listen to those who know more than you. You can't tell the, 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 the driver's ed teacher how you're going to drive. He's got to tell you. He know 
knows the rules. You don't. So when you get in Christ, don't think you're going all to the roof. No, 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 no. You sit, learn, receive, observe, listen, learn, obey. Don't have so much to add to what the teacher's saying. Okay. Anyway, that is the greatest leaders. Let me tell you this. You want to be a leader? The greatest leaders are made of the greatest followers. Not wimps. Followers. When you are a godly follower, God can do great things with you. But if you, if you know too much and you got too much to say, when people are trying to teach you something, it will take you years and decades before God can do anything with you because you already know it all. Be careful. God bless you.